Welcome back to NGN, everyone. I'm Julian. I'm here with Pete, VP of PR and Marketing. It's a lot of acronyms, and we're going to talk <laughs> General Bethesda today. So we're here. We're going to talk about this honor in a little bit with the creative director. Uh, we've also got on the docket for Bethesda, we've got some Doom VR, which yep. as NVIDIA fans, we're pretty excited about because NVIDIA has been doing a lot VR related. So we're excited for Doom VR. When, when can we be expecting that? Um, well, so what we're showing here today is uh, demos of Doom and Fallout 4. Fallout 4, we've actually announced, like, hey, this is a game we're making and it's coming out uh, next year on the, on the Vive. Doom, this is more like, hey, this is something we're working on, but like an actual game or announcement that we haven't really gotten that far yet. This was more about showing off some ideas and stuff we've been working on. Yeah, one of those ideas for Doom VR that I thought was really interesting was the actual movement in mm -hmm. the game. You guys tackled that kind of differently than other, instead of like a direct teleport, you guys kind of had a little subtle tweak on it. How do you guys handle movement in VR? With well, you know, it's something we're still working on for, for all of our stuff is figuring out that, that issue of, of moving through the world in a way that feels kind of cool and natural. And it's something we're going to continue to experiment with, try different things to see what feels sort of the most natural. Yeah, so for those who don't know, the, the movement style, right, is like you're in this middle of this fast-paced battle in hell, and then time slows, and you can kind of figure out where you're going to work, and it, it naturally transitions you there instead of like a jump cut, like right. in, a, in a movie or something like that. And to me, I think this is really interesting because in VR, I, I think what's going to separate it from, you know, like a gimmick to something that you can really build full games in, one of these barriers, I think, is going to be movement. So seeing how Doom handles that, a, a notoriously fast-paced game that might be difficult to jive with VR, I think it's really going to be interesting. Yeah, it, and it definitely is a, a challenge with a game like Doom, you know, for, for anybody who's who's playing or played the, the Doom game we shipped a, a couple of months ago knows that game is incredibly fast. 60 frames a second stuff coming at you from all different directions. Um, you know, it's all about being really aggressive and moving quickly and moving vertically. N not something that you could just straight take into a VR experience and have anybody play without throwing up. Figuring out those challenges of how to make it still feel fun and fast and visceral without being a vomit comet is a, is, a, <laughs> is a pretty important challenge. So the other thing I wanted to talk about that I haven't heard very much on at all is Prey. Mm -hmm. Can you tell me about Prey? I can. I'd love to tell you about Please Prey. Please tell me about Prey. So we uh, we announced it at, e uh, at E3 that it was a title that we were working on. It's a um, it's a reimagining of the Prey franchise um, uh, by the folks at Arcane Studios. This is doing some things that probably feel a little bit familiar to Dishonored fans, but then a whole host of, of new things. Uh, it's a game set on a space station called Talos One. Um, it sort of keeps the, the the basic DNA of the original Prey franchise, which is you're being hunted by aliens who who want to kill you. Try not to die. Um, In space. But oh, it's, I'm having flashbacks to Dead Space um, now. You know, it's a, it's a very different game than you know Dead Space or or any of the other stuff that's set in space. It is set on a space station, but it's a very different kind of space station. Um, it's sort of like. Um, if, if Apple or Google took over an old space station and then built a really tricked out, awesome, fancy one, like what you would imagine they would do, it's more right. like that, so. But then they'd release a new space station every year and you'd have to upgrade and it, and it, it and the plugs and Yeah, the work. power would all be different yeah. than the previous one. Um, but, uh, so it's about this sort of um, emergent uh, play style that, that Arcane is known for, where you get to kind of figure out how you want to play the game. Um, how you're going to deal with different challenges. It's not just a straight shooter. It's definitely not a horror game. It's got a psychological element to it, but it's a very immersive, fun, open first person game where you're combining uh, sort of whatever resources you can find on the station, these alien powers that you can get um, by, uh, it's really unsettling. We inject this, your eyeball. Uh, oh, with you the, just went with right this, for uh, it. Uh, and, uh, and uh, that's how you get the, the alien powers. And then so you can kind of evolve and, and move as you move through the game, figure out which ones you want to use or not by studying the aliens and what they can do. I'd like to say real quick, children, injecting things in your eyeballs will Very not bad. give you superpowers. Do not powers. try at home. So this is a game, just to, in case people don't understand that. But that sounds fascinating. I really liked in uh, Dishonored, they, they said, you know, this game, it's it's not very linear. It's like a mini open worlds for each level. Yeah. And you, and you kind of feel your way through yeah, it. Yeah, so, so it's not open see. world in the way that you know, like a Fallout 4, a Skyrim, or, or you're totally you, open. Right, yeah. but, it, but there is a lot of, of openness in terms of where you go and, and how you want to um, move through the game. Um, and because you're on a space station, you don't have like unlimited resources. So we have this really cool, uh, concept of gathering materials that you put into um, these fabricators. They're basically like really cool advanced 3D printers. Mm -hmm. And so rather than like 
oh, well, here's a this or here's a that. Like if you want more of something, you want more of a resource or um, you want to upgrade something or you want a jetpack or whatever, you, you get that stuff by finding all the materials and then using these fabricators to actually create them. We even have these grenades that you can, you can put down or throw and they'll sort of suck up all the materials in the area and reduce them down to their, their basic elements. Like and a you black gather, hole grenades. Yeah, something. basically. And then you gather up all those elements and you can put them in the fabricators, use these different recipes to, to make stuff. So aside from you know, Doom VR, Dishonored, we're going to talk with the creative director, Prey. Is there anything else you think Bethesda would uh, I'm, I'm super excited about um, uh, Legends. Uh, we just went into open beta at uh, uh, QuakeCon. Um, uh, on PC, and we've had a ton of folks playing the game. Uh, I really love uh, how it's coming along and uh, and coming together, and and us sort of entering into this very different genre that maybe we're not known for, but um, with an approach and a take on it that I think is is kind of fun. And and we've sort of found our own space and, and made it our own. So if you if you like the Elder Scrolls or you like strategy card games or maybe both, then uh, definitely worth checking out Legends. And it's open beta. So it's open beta, so you can go to Bethesda.net and download and start playing for free. Great, so Bethesda.net, you can actually get in on the open beta for Elder Scrolls Legends. Yep. And then I'm still looking forward to Doom VR and Prey and Dishonored 2, so it looks like Bethesda. Yeah, we got, we got a lot stuff. of stuff going on. Awesome. Elder Scrolls Online is still uh, cranking along, and uh, we got a lo lot more cool stuff coming up for that as well. So yeah, we're hoping for another good year for Bethesda. Awesome, well, thank you very much for talking to us today, Pete. Uh, good luck adjusting to Germany time. And thanks thank very much. Thanks for putting out some great games. Yeah.